Hey everybody, welcome back to New Venus channel and today we look into why we all have to write dot value for all of the reps and if there is not a way around that. Spoiler, there kind of was and isn't anymore. Let's check out what it exactly means. Here we go. With View for Unit Composition API, we also have a slightly different way of writing reactive variables, ref and reactive. And why we all settled on the debate of whether to use what, which is mainly ref and reactive in some cases, all the time when we use ref, then we either pass around the reactive reference or the value with the dot value. Which also means if we want to change something, then, well, we have to use dot value all the time. And I know some of you out there are pretty annoyed about that. So, well, you might wonder why nobody thought about that when designing the composition API or maybe even afterward. And the answer is, well, Evan and the team, they actually did. There was an initiative and it failed. So uh, let's look into how we could rewrite our code with that thingy, why it's not there anymore, what are the pros and cons, and why it eventually uh, did not make it into the core as a non-experimental feature. Let's uh, jump into demo application. Our demo application is really, really minimal. And I mean, we have a simple counter here. We have a ref count. We have an onclick function that just increments the count over here, right on line five. And we also have the dreaded dot value here, uh, which a lot of you out there dislike. Believe me, I, I was pretty similar. I was actually the same opinion when I started using composition API. I was like, why to write the dot value all the time? It's very annoying, but um, well, let, let me talk about that in a little bit. Because we will rewrite this component and the button in here in the template, actually the whole template will stay the same. We only rewrite this part with what is called the activity transform. Which is uh, more or less uh, something that came up in 2021 by Evan and the Vue team um, to improve the DX of the composition API. So there was already post script setup. So script setup was already there. And to actually deal with the dot value, well, there was an RFC and an experimental feature that made it uh, to avoid dot value fully. I'm not kidding. And this was called, as I just said, the activity transform. Uh, some may heard of that, um, especially if you were around in view 3.0 and like the early 3.3, 3.2 versions launched. And maybe some of you didn't because as just mentioned, it kind of failed. So I have a project here that we've just seen where we can use it and we'll go through the benefits and as just mentioned, why uh, it's not really recommended anymore. Plus, if you still have a project or want to try it out and to see yourself why it doesn't work as well as you might think, there's still a way to use it. So let's jump back into it. And this simple single file component is easy to rewrite then. So we have this dot value and we want to get rid of that. So we could just say count plus plus. And of course now TypeScript, right, uh, will complain saying, hey, this doesn't work. It's a constant. We can't change it. Okay, so we just say let count equals ref zero. And now TypeScript will say, yeah, uh, nice try, but it doesn't really work out because count is not of type number any or big int here or an enum type. So what we do now and with the reactivity transform, what's happening is we just put a dollar in front of ref. And now count is type reactive variable number and count plus plus works. And you might wonder now, wait, wait, this is all we have to do, a dollar in front and we're done? Yeah, actually, yes. And maybe some of you, especially uh, familiar with Svelte, might remember like Svelte Runes, a kind of new edition, and it looks kind of similar, though it, under the hood works a bit differently. So it seems pretty fine, right? Why isn't it a thing though? And what is it doing under the hood? I mean, it's not just like magically there. And you're absolutely right. So under the hood, what's happening is that this dollar ref is nothing else than a compiler macro. And by the way, if you don't know what compiler macros are, luckily I made a little video about it. So definitely check that out on also the compiler macros that are in the actual view source code right now that are available to everyone to use, like define props, define expose, and so on, so on, define model, you know, and how they actually work under the hood. But the plain idea is that this will be changed by the compiler. So you need a build step to make that happen. And eventually this will basically just replace and say, hey, this then counted value. So whenever we have a dollar ref here, the compiler knows, okay, I will just do my magic under the hood and it will be fine. Now, this kind of works, I would say pretty okay. But let's say we have another composable and let's just call it use counter. So we have some kind of inline composable. I also made a video on that, by the way. And we just say this returns a ref of zero. 
So this could also be from external library, like view use, think of something like, I don't know, use mouse, use mentalist and whatnot. And if we want to call that, then we can say let a equals use counter. And a here in this case, hmm, okay, that's a bit weird. A is of course still a ref, so we can't just like say a plus plus, that would throw. So what do we have to do here? And that's a bit of a tricky part because now we get a ref in return. So we have to deal magically with that and tell the compiler, hey, we want to use it with the reactivity transform like here. And what you usually do is you wrap it in just a dollar. So we have a function, it's called dollar, not to like mix up with jQuery or window.dollar, which is available in some browsers. This is just a way to transform the refs to reactive variables, right? And here we go. We have now A as a reactive variable and A++ works fine. The same, by the way, if we wouldn't only have a ref returned here, but say A is ref zero and B is ref one, then we could do the same thing and then destructure this here. This would fully work with like A and B and get A. We don't have uh, any dot value, we have like two fixed and so on and so on, because these are both, as we see here, reactive variables. So far, so good. But on the other hand, quite a bit to learn. If you think about it like, okay, we have this dollar in front now and we have this dollar function. If the thingy returns a ref, and of course not every library will start using the reactivity transform, especially not back then when it was introduced as an experimental feature. So there has to be some kind of compatibility layer as we've seen here. But we are not done yet, actually. There's one more thing to consider. And the thing to consider is that if our use counter would actually take an argument, let's say initial counter, which could be, for example, uh, a ref of type number, right? So now we have the problem, okay, fine, this should take a ref. Let's just pass in, I don't know, const, oh, we don't even have to name, we can just say ref zero, right? And that's kind of seems fine because we, we say it's a ref, but what if it's a dollar ref? So that wouldn't work anymore. So if you use the reactivity transform everywhere and let's say define it as, I don't know, let uh, initial count uh, to ref zero and we passed it in here because for some reason, if that should change when the watch it, reset it whatsoever, it doesn't work anymore because it is not the a reactive reference, it's actually the value of it, right? So. What we now have to do, and yeah, stay with me, stay with me, we have to wrap it in a double dollar. So we basically have to opt out with another macro to say, okay, we actually want to access the ref under this whole thing and not the value. And at latest here, you're like, wait, this is a lot to grasp. We have the dollar ref and same for like dollar computer, dollar shallow ref and so on and so on, dollar two ref as well. We have the dollar function to like make sure things that return refs, we can automatically transform them, great. But also you have the double dollar to then, as a little escape hatch, um, get out of the reactivity transform and use the ref value again. And you might wonder saying like, hey, look, okay, fine. This, this doesn't seem too big of a deal. Just don't pass anything to composable. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work, of course. So the point is why it failed, we kind of see straight away, it is a lot to grasp. It is a lot to learn. And it's important that nobody has to use the reactivity transform or had to use back then. So we might have seen a mix, some components with it, some composables without it. So that's really, really difficult, especially if you deal with it in composables outside of SFCs. It wasn't that easy, let's say. And we also have another problem. If we jump back to the code, I mean, these are just like 17 lines of code, right? We don't really see that A and B are reactive or that like count is reactive. This could be a plain JavaScript variable. Sure, if we hover, we see reactive variable. Okay, TypeScript might tell us, but not if we use it. While if we have um, the typical ref, so let's say original count or something, and we have ref zero, then we always know, okay, original count dot value. And while a lot of people think this value is super annoying, to me personally, this really changed the perception of it not only for reactivity transform, but just writing more view code, because the dot value is actually super, super helpful. You straight away know, is something reactive? So like a ref, or is it not? Unless you have a dot value in your object properties, but that's a different story and maybe you should avoid it or think about it. Nevertheless, the dot value is a clear sign and a reduction of mental overload to say like, okay, this is reactive. I can think about it. I can deal with that. So um, I think it's pretty, pretty useful. But 
that's one thing. Kind of like one mental overload of like, okay, you have to remember that value was removed. But now we have a big overhead for another part, which is dealing with refs uh, and all these values. So in a way, we just traded the one thing, noted value to another thing, escape hatch, dealing with refs as returns and so on and so on. So it's not fully worth it, right? And there are actually more things. If we take a look at the code one more time, we will also see this doesn't look very JavaScript like anymore, right? It's not just like, okay, I define my ref, I do something in dot value. Sure, we have this one rule that says this is a bit of reactivity. Others with signals have like, I don't know, set count or something like that, or when accessing it, just like have the count to call and so on. So there is always some kind of, let's say, indicator. And here in this case, it is dot value. And that's, I think, totally fine. But this here, yeah, this wouldn't work even in just a JavaScript environment, while the composition API itself fully does. So you can do this with Vue just in a CD and you don't need any compiler to deal with that. But with this part down here, you definitely do. So that's an issue. And it will also mean that a certain user group can't use these features at all. And that leads to another problem, which is fragmentation. We all know about it. We're all uh, want to have less ways of doing things actually was also mentioned here and there in some Deja Vu podcast episodes. We all are big fans of like, okay, we have a few ways, ideally one standard way and a few ways to branch left and right. And that would not really work with the reactivity transform. Some people might adopt it, others don't. Uh, inconsistencies in a single code base, what is with libraries and so on, so on, so on. And then we also come to the next part. What is with tooling? What is with ESLint rules? Like, You've seen, okay, TypeScript works well with that based on how we set it up and we'll come to that in a little bit. But ESLint rules, for example, is also another point, how to deal with the rules that were there before. There's a lot of work that would have been done there. And all these points just to remove pot value? Is that really worth it? Well, Evan and the core team actually voted all together and decided, no, it's not. It's, it's definitely not. So that's why the reactivity transform was scrapped and 3.3 was a warning and view 3.4 it was removed and now lives in the view macros library, which is why we can still use it. So let's have a look how I implemented that or like how I added the reactivity transform back to see if you might have to, if you still have a reactivity transform application out there, you want to update without uh, missing out on used view features. So let's just have a, a quick look here. And luckily it's not super complicated. We can just go in our Nux config and for Vue it is pretty similar because from Vue macros, there's a reactivity transform library. We have integrations for Vite, for Webpack. You can just take that and say, okay, there's a plugin, for example, here, the Vite plugin, you'll call it and that's it. To get TypeScript support, of course, you also want to make sure that you add the types to your TS config. In Nux, this is done for the Nux config. In your own view project, you can just do that manually. That's also fine, but it's all nicely documented. Also for that, link is in the description. And now you might wonder, okay, if I don't have the use case of like having a legacy reactivity transform application because the feature was there and was experimental and some people, me included, used it. So why would I do this? Like, yeah, you can do some research, you can check it out, get a feeling yourself for it. But other than that, I don't see a, a big reason besides compatibility to do so. Actually, there's even a CLI and also link for that in the description, which you can use to basically rewrite your code. It's like a big code mod for your view application to just make sure that the reactivity transform is removed. So you wouldn't even have to do it manually like I did back in the time. And yeah, that's why the reactivity transform is not a thing anymore. And you might wonder, okay, this was apparently like a bigger experiment. Definitely was also linked to RFC in all the comments in the description as usual. Is there anything good that came out of it? Well, the answer is, first of all, it's good that it was tried out and especially in larger code base, uh, like just seeing that it doesn't work. So it's good that there was the try and that it was decided against it for very good reasoning. And yeah, there's something else. There's something we have right now in view, which is the reactive props destructuring. So this was an RFC on its own after the reactivity transform was cut. Because one thing we could just do there, because it was all magically transformed, is destructuring props while still having a reactive. And that rings a bell because this is now a thing in view and it's stable. So in a way, we just took the best parts of the reactivity transform with as little breaking changes and fragmentation as possible while still having the benefit of not using that weird with defaults helper and a few caveats, right? Like if you want to watch a prop or similar, you have to use a getter function. 
But other than that, yeah, it's like we got the best out of it, so to say. And that's great, isn't it? So in the end, a few takeaways here. Reactivity Transform, yeah, looks similar to, for example, Swell Drones, but didn't work out for the view ecosystem because too much fragmentation, it improved the X in one part, but it really, really, let's say, destroyed or <laughs> hindered it on others. And what I also want to really uh, make sure that, that you think about it in another way, the dot value can be a bit annoying, sure, but it's actually helpful for the mental overload and just thinking, oh yeah, that's reactive. So I'm curious, what do you think about it? Uh, source code, of course, is usually in the description. Let me know uh, if you have any thoughts on reactivity transform, if you maybe have still an application that uses it, and uh, yeah, what do you think about it? Let me know. Also check out the latest Asia View episode where Michael, Daniel and I talked about our prediction for 2025 with some uh, somewhat spicy hot takes in there for the Vuenox ecosystem. And don't forget to catch uh, me, the Vue.js Nation, which is an online conference happening next week. Link for that also in the description. We'll do a little Deja Vu episode there live. So with some feedback from the chat, a little panel about AI and Vue, and also give a talk I heard. So uh, definitely uh, take a look there. Hope to see you all uh, around there. And of course, on the next video. Until then, happy hacking. <laughs>